My name is Trevor Romaine. I write and illustrate children's books. I've got the best job in the world. The only other job I would like to have is being a taster in an ice cream factory. But I wrote a book called The Keeper of the Dreams. And a surprise today, I'm actually going to read that book to you and show you the pictures. I'm really excited. It's about a little girl called Zoe who loses her dreams. And then she has to go and face the boogeyman to get her dreams back. And you'll see what happens at the end of the story. After you watch it, why not pop along to ACCO.org, the American Childhood Cancer Organization, and give them a little support because that's an amazing organization who do fabulous work and I'm very proud to be associated with ACCO and on their behalf to share this story with you. I hope you enjoy it. The Keeper of the Dreams Written and illustrated by Trevor Romaine. Zoe loved dreaming. At night, she would smile happily when her mother tucked her in and turned off the light. Once the room was dark, Zoe would try and fall asleep as quickly as possible so that she could start to dream. In her dreams, Zoe visited the most amazing places. She sometimes even went to visit her grandfather who had died many years before. He now lived in a dream house with all his favorite hanging plants. Zoe would sit in a rocking chair and tell her grandfather about the problems her father had at work and the bad moods that sometimes made her mother grumpy. Talking about the family to her grandfather made Zoe feel extra warm inside. And after some milk and cookies, she would kiss her grandfather goodbye and travel on to the next dream. Then one evening, something happened. Zoe had a nightmare, a bad dream that spoiled her sleep. She woke up scared and didn't want to close her eyes again. It happened the following night too, and the night after, and again the night after that. It's from pesticides, said her father. Always wash your fruit. It's from watching too much television, said Zoe's grandmother. Your bedtime bath is probably too hot, said her mother. One Sunday afternoon, while she was napping, Zoe managed to sneak in a good dream before the bad ones came. She dreamed she went to visit her grandfather again. Grandfather, she said unhappily, I keep having bad dreams. How can I stop them? Oh, there's only one thing to do, said her grandfather wisely. You must visit the keeper of the dreams. Who's the keeper of the dreams? asked Zoe. She's a very wise and wonderful old woman who lives somewhere between here and there, said her grandfather. Nobody knows exactly where the place is, but she's in charge of handing out the good dreams. You'll need to speak to her about your nightmares. But how will I find her? asked Zoe. I'll tell you, said her grandfather, smiling warmly. But you must keep it a secret, because only special people may visit the keeper of the dreams. I won't tell a soul, whispered Zoe. I promise. Tonight, when the lights are off and you are ready to fall asleep, whispered her grandfather, close your eyes and be as still and quiet as you possibly can. Soon you'll hear your own heartbeat. Boom, boom, boom. Concentrate on your heartbeat until you can't hear anything else. Then count ten heartbeats backwards. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And suddenly your eyes will open. You will find yourself in a clearing in the middle of an African rainforest. In the center of the clearing, you'll see a giant tree. Walk around the tree four times, then sit on the rock that rests in the shade. Then what, Grandpa? asked Zoe. Then you wait. Wait for what? You wait until the time is right. How will I know when the time is right? asked Zoe. You'll know, said her grandfather, chuckling. You'll know. The following day at school, Zoe discovered that all of her friends had been having nightmares too. They were all unhappy and a little grumpy because they hadn't had enough sleep. We all need our dreams, said Zoe. Otherwise, there'll be nothing to look forward to at the end of the day. That night, Zoe decided to visit the keeper of the dreams. She waited until her mother had tucked her in and turned off the light. 
Then she lay very still. She soon heard her own heart beat. Boom, boom, boom. As soon as it was loud and strong, she counted ten heartbeats backwards. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <gasps> Suddenly, she found herself in a clearing in the middle of an African rainforest. In the center of the clearing, Zoe saw a giant tree. She walked around the tree four times, as her grandfather had told her, and then sat on the rock that rested in the shade. Uh, yes, said a voice. Startled, Zoe looked up and saw an old man standing on the edge of the clearing. He wore a straw hat with a net that hung from its brim and covered his face. Uh, I came to see the keeper of the dreams, said Zoe bravely, although her knees were shaking a little. Well, you better come back next week, said the old man, because she's sick. But I need to speak to her, said Zoe. It's, it's important. Mm, sick she is, mumbled the old man. She won't even eat the blueberry pie I baked her. Made from real blueberries, you know. Are you a keeper of the dreams too? asked Zoe. Oh no, chuckled the man. I'm just an ordinary beekeeper. My wife is the keeper of the dreams. Or she was until she got sick. Apparently a fellow by the name of Boogeyman. Is minding the dreams and until she gets better. Where is she? asked Zoe. Who? Your wife, said Zoe, the keeper of the dreams. She's in bed, said the old man. She's sick, you know. Can I see her? asked Zoe. Mm, I don't know, said the old man. She might have pulled the covers over her head. Then all you'd see is a tuft of hair sticking out of the sheets. I mean, I mean, can I talk to her? said Zoe. Well, said the old man, if she's not sleeping, you can. Although she sometimes talks in her sleep. She's been doing a lot of that lately. It's, it's the fever, I think. The old man led Zoe through the woods to a small thatched cottage. She followed him through the door and into the living room. Uh, wait a moment, he said and disappeared into the bedroom. A few seconds later, he popped his head out the door. She's awake, he said softly. Come on in. The keeper of the dreams was lying in the biggest feather bed Zoe had ever seen. Although she looked very old, Zoe thought she was the most beautiful woman she'd ever set eyes on. She wore her white hair in a French braid. Wild flowers of all colours were woven through it. Her skin was wrinkled but looked so soft and smooth. Zoe had an incredible urge to touch the old woman's face. The keeper of the dreams smiled weakly and tried to lift her head. The old man took a glass of water from the bedside table and held it to her lips. She took a sip and rested her head back on the pillow. Feel better? whispered the old man. He leaned over and kissed his wife on the forehead. The keeper of the dreams nodded and closed her eyes. Come, said the old man. We must let her sleep. Let's go and see how the substitute keeper of the dreams is doing. So he followed the old man along a path through the woods until they came to a waterfall. Follow me! said the old man, stepping into the waterfall and disappearing. Zoe quickly followed the old man and found him standing in a cave that was carved out of a rock behind the waterfall. The cave was beautiful. It was filled with magnificent stalactites hanging from the roof and towering stalagmites stretching from the ground ever upward. The crystal clear sound of the dropping water was suddenly shattered by a laugh. <laughs> came a voice from somewhere deep in the cave. I thought you might come here. Welcome to the cave of horror, my little dear. I'm the boogeyman. I'm also the new keeper of the dreams. You might remember me from your worst nightmare. I'm scared, whispered Zoe, grasping the old man's hand. Don't be afraid, whispered. This is just a dream. He can't hurt you. Have no fear, Zoe. As soon as my wife is well, we'll take care of him very quickly. She'll put an end to his nonsense in two seconds. Can we go now? whispered Zoe, tugging the old man toward the cave entrance. Sure, he said, putting his arm around. Let's go home and see how the patient is doing. Ever heard of recurring nightmares? yelled the boogeyman as Zoe and the old man were leaving. I'll get you, Zoe, when the moon goes behind the clouds on a dark, dreary night. Zoe's too strong for you, said the old man. All she needs to do is open her eyes and you will disappear, banished into the depths of the night. Be gone with you, growled the boogeyman. I have thousands of children to scare with this bad dream brew I'm stirring. 
Hmm, let me see now. A snake for young Stevie, a monster for Mary, a dragon for David, and how about a vampire for Victoria? Look at them squirm in their beds. I see them as they try to sleep. Zoe looked over her shoulder as they left the cave. She imagined the boogeyman stirring the bad dream brew in a three-legged pot over an open fire. She shuddered as they passed under the waterfall and back into daylight. Will he follow us? asked Zoe. No, said the old man. Nightmares hate the light, you know that. Just checking, said Zoe happily. Back at the cottage, something was not quite right. The keeper of the dreams was very sick. She would not wake up when the old man shook her. Dearest, he whispered, your lips are so dry. Have a little sip of cool water. The keeper of the dreams did not reply. Honey, said the old man shaking off, are you all right? Still there was no reply. Oh my, said the old man with tears in his eyes. It's the fever. I'm afraid she may be in a coma. Zoe and the old man sat alongside the bed for hours, trying to decide what to do. I know, said Zoe. Know what? said the old man, confused. My grandfather told me if you lose your dreams, you lose your hope for the future, said Zoe. And? urged the old man. And if the keeper of the dreams dies, my hopes and dreams will also die. So? said the old man. So if this is my dream, I have to keep it alive, said Zoe. I must make sure that the keeper of the dreams gets well again. How will you do that? asked the old man. By believing, said Zoe. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. The old man got up and left the room. He came back a few seconds later, followed by a man carrying a little black bag. This is Dr. Willett, said the old man. I need to be alone with the patient, said the doctor. Would you two mind waiting in the other room, please? The old man and Zoe went into the living room. Where did the doctor come from? asked Zoe. I don't know, said the old man. This is your dream. Zoe and the old man sat in silence as they waited. Uh, you can go back in now, said the doctor a while later, poking his head around the corner. The keeper of the dreams was awake, and although she had an IV drip attached to her arm, a smile was trying to tickle the edge of her mouth. Ah, a saline solution was all she needed, said the doctor. I have given her some medicine too. She'll be well in no time. Thank you, said Zoe. No, said the doctor. Thank you. The doctor packed his bag and hurried off to his next appointment. Get rid of the substitute dreamkeeper, he yelled over his shoulder. Don't worry, said the old man. Zoe will soon take care of him. I'm not going back in that cave, said Zoe, shaking her head. No way. This might change your mind, whispered the keeper of the dreams. She handed Zoe a note that lying on her bedside table. Zoe, said the note, to get rid of your nightmares and the evil boogeyman, you must go back to the cave. Once you are there, you will know what to do. Love, Grandpa. When was my grandfather here? asked Zoe, surprised. It must have been a while I was asleep, whispered the old woman. And because things in dreams happen quickly, the keeper of the dreams soon got better, and before long Zoe found herself standing at the entrance of the cave. Go on, said the keeper of the dreams, giving Zoe a little shove. Get in there and show the boogeyman who's boss. I really don't want to go inside that cave, said Zoe. Go into the cave and deal with him, said the keeper of the dreams. You must face your problem to solve it. The quicker you get it done, the happier your life will be. But I'm scared, whispered Zoe. Don't be scared, smiled the old woman. He can't hurt you. He's only a figment of your imagination. He really is just a character in a bad dream. You promise, said Zoe. I promise, said the keeper of the dreams. Zoe took a deep breath and stepped into the cave. An evil-looking shadow stopped her in her tracks. Hold it right there, said an awfully scary voice. It was the boogeyman. Why? said Zoe bravely. Eh, uh, because I'll, I'll scare you to death, said the voice. That's why. Tell him that's not a good enough answer, whispered the old woman from behind Zoe. Uh, that's not a good enough answer, yelled Zoe, her voice echoing through the cave. Then, then I'll, I, I'll make you shake with fear, replied the boogeyman. Dare him to try, whispered the keeper of the bee. Are you sure? whispered Zoe nervously over her shoulder. Tell him! urged the old woman. Just try, yelled Zoe. I'll do just that, said the boogeyman, striding toward her. She covered her face with her hands and closed her eyes as the boogeyman reached her. I will now frighten you as you've never been frightened before, growled the boogeyman. In fact, I might scare the living daylights out of you. 
Zoe, open your eyes, urged the keeper of the dreams. Be quiet, old woman, boomed the boogeyman. Zoe, listen to me, begged the keeper of the dreams. You must open your eyes. For the first time since she had met the keeper of the dreams, she heard fear in the old woman's voice. Zoe suddenly felt a cold chill of evil creep through her skin. She knew the boogeyman was about to touch her. I'm too scared, screamed Zoe. Do it, encouraged the keeper of the dreams. For goodness sake. Be prepared to meet your doom, said the voice. The voice was so close and so frightening that Zoe had to open her eyes. A bright light flooded her mind. She slowly began to focus. Zoe found herself in her bed where she had fallen asleep. The late afternoon sun blazed through the window and warmed her face. Zoe smiled. She rolled over and stretched, almost squashing the cat who was sleeping beside her. Zoe felt comfortable and happy inside. She looked forward to going to her bed that night because she knew the boogeyman would never frighten her again.